Welcome to another episode of 7 Minutes Medicine. Today we're going to talk about the diagnostic approach to diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome. So first, diabetic ketoacidosis is a serious metabolic derangement characterized by acidosis, dehydration, and hyperglycemia. HHS is almost the same derangement except for it has more hyperosmolarity and not much acidosis. Precipitating factors major illness like CVA and myocardial infarction, dose emission of insulin, especially in type 1 diabetes mellitus, steroid, high dose thiazide and second generation antipsychotics, cocaine use, poor compliance and malfunction of the devices, which is very important thing and we have to keep eye on it because this is important for patient education. For the history taking, DKA is a rapid onset, over 24 hours the whole uh, course. HHS, it may take several days. The symptoms, polyuria, polydipsia, weight loss, the lethargy, obstination, focal neurological deficit, then coma. Neurological symptoms caused by hyperosmolarity, more than 320, are common in HHS. Abdominal pain, which is caused by acidosis and hyperventilation, both more common in DKA. So clinically, the HHS patients have more multi status problem. And diabetic ketoacidosis, they have more pain and hyperventilation problem. For the physical exam, the most important thing is volume depletion, characterized by low GVP, dry skin, tachycardia, hypotension, and orthostatic hypotension. Deep respiration, like compensatory hyperventilation, Fruity other and DKA, always evaluate cardiovascular status, volume status, and mental status. Those are the most important three things. Hemodynamics of the patient, if there is any cardiovascular event, volume status of the patient, and mental status. Those are three important things we have always to focus on when we are addressing DKA and HHS. For the lab work, the serum glucose, it may exceed the 1000 in HHS. In the DKA, it tends to be less, 300 almost. The sodium, we have to calculate the corrected sodium. So we add 1.6 or 2 to every 100 increase in glucose above 100 milligram per deciliter. And an ion gap, very important to calculate sodium minus CL and bicarb. Uh, urine analysis to check for ketones, serum ketones, and plasma osmolality, which is 2 multiplied by sodium plus glucose divided by 18, and urea divided by 2.8 if you're using milligram per deciliter. The sodium here is the measured and not the corrected. This is very important. Leukocytosis, 10 to 15,000. Uh, uh, suspect infection only if the white count is more than that or the band more than 10%. Because especially DKA tend to have high uh, WPCs. Lipase and amylase are both elevated in DKA, even without pancreatitis, so they are very non-specific finding. BUN and creatine are both elevated, most likely because of the dehydration. And always you have to keep eye on the creatinine because renal function is important, especially in the electrolyte replacement, as we're going to see in the management of DKA lecture. Serum phosphate. The total body, there is loss, but on the presentation, it might be normal. So after you start insulin in drip, you have to keep a close eye on the phosphate because it's going to go down. 
Serum potassium also, there is a total body loss, 300, 600 milli equivalent. But it can be normal on the presentation, sometimes even high, because of the shift and the acidosis. And after you start the insulin drip, it's going to go down significantly. So you have to keep a close eye on the potassium during your DKA and HHS protocol. VBG, the pH of the VBG is less by 0.03 compared to ABG, but we use it because we are not much concerned about the O2. So we use it, it's easier for the patient, so we can use it for the pH mainly if we do that correction. Hyperlipidemia, you can find it, especially hypertriglycidemia during your blood work. And also, do not miss uh, screening for the precipitant factors like infection, uh, cardiovascular event, so you do chest X-ray cultures, and AKG. So for the diagnosis, in the HHS, the pH generally more than 7.3, and the serum bicarb generally more than 20, and the serum glucose generally more than 600 mg per deciliter, and it might be positive ketonemia, but not much. In the euglycemic DKA, which is a very important topic because it's more often with the SGLT2 inhibitor, uh, the glucose can be normal or even hypoglycemic, and the patient can have DKA, and you go by the pH and the ketones and the anion gap. For alcoholic ketoacidosis, uh, chronic alcohol intake, ketone positive, and normal blood sugar, and normal hemoglobin A1c. And the starvation ketoacidosis, there is mild ketoacid at most 8 to 10, and the bicarb is more than 17. Thank you so much for listening to our lecture. And please, if you like our content, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.